Good morning. Welcome to the Align and SAL experience session of our workshop today. I'll turn the time over to Jessica King and Daniel Shiramizu. Thank you, Maylie, and good morning, everyone. Uh, we wanna say thank you for taking the time to join us today. I'm Daniel Shermizu, and I'm joined by Jessica King. Today, we'll be presenting on the Align and SEL experience. So to kick things off, uh, we'll talk about what to expect within Align and the Secure Evidence Locker, or SEL, as it pertains to the audit experience. We'll look at WEX audit process using legacy systems and make the comparison to the new Align and SEL audit process. Some areas of comparison will include the notice of audit, RSAs and working papers, data requests and RFIs, and how an entity provides their evidence. As we walk through the differences and similarities between these facets of the audit process, we want to highlight areas of best practice that contribute to a smooth and successful audit engagement. How communication, responsiveness, and proactiveness all play a large role in effective audits. Next slide, please. What to expect. Here are a few highlights that can be expected as we transition into the Align system. All US monitoring engagements beginning after July 1st will be transitioning into Align. The evolution of Align training. This is a chance for WEC to bolster our entity training as more engagements occur within the system. Our aim is to ensure entities feel ready and comfortable to take on an Align-based engagement. There will be plenty of lessons and growth on our end as we continue con to conduct training and complete Align-based audits. A centralized system. We like to think of Align as a one-stop shop where all pertinent audit-related information can be found. This leads to increased ease of locating and sharing information, an increase in quality and consistency. We have worked audit engagements that featured multiple regions already, and this centralized system creates much less room for error when sharing documentation and information back and forth. Efficiencies throughout the compliance monitoring process in general not just related to audit activities. Align allows WEC to see compliance history and compliance trends. This will be very helpful when WEC is formulating COPs. And finally, automation of CMEP activity, whether this is audit reports following an engagement or notices leading up to an engagement. These instances of automation will create large efficiencies for WEC as we move forward in the Align system. Next, we can touch on the SEL. Increase security. Security is something WEC takes very seriously. And by using the SEL, WEC will no longer be housing sensitive information or documentation on our networks. Keep in mind that some of these aspects and pro some of the aspects of these processes are subject to change due to entity feedback, updates within the system, and things of that nature. We envision the line as an ever evolving tool where our feedback and continuous input on how the system can improve will make this something that brings a tremendous amount of value moving forward. Now I will hand it over to Jessica as we move forward by illustrating what some of these changes may look like. Sunbear is participating in a familiar audit process while Orco is operating within the new Align audit process. Next slide, please. Thanks, Daniel. Well, who all loves change? No hands are necessary for me to really know what some may feel about change. And I don't know if anyone else has read the book called Who Moved My Cheese by Spencer Johnson, but if you haven't, I highly recommend it. To oversimplify and make a short story short, there are four characters in a maze and they are, are given cheese in the same cheese station for days until one day when they went to the cheese station, the cheese was gone. Two of the characters immediately left in search of the new cheese while the remaining two characters stayed in the empty cheese station waiting and hoping the cheese would appear again. The two characters that immediately adapted to the change were able to find a gold mine of new cheese in a different part of the maze. In contrast, the two characters that stayed in the empty cheese station fretted, argued, and were frustrated with the change. Spoiler alert, eventually these two did find their way to the gold mine of cheese, but it wasn't until after many days of undue frustration. So why am I talking about all this cheese and change? As Daniel mentioned, WEC will be moving all audit, US audits to the new Align system starting July 1st. 
Will there be growing pains? Absolutely. We will be searching for that gold mine together. Our hope today is that through our representation of showing some bear power who will be audited in WEC's current audit process, and Orco Electric who will be audited in the new Align process, that finding our gold mine of cheese with this change in systems is going to be easier than we thought and even familiar. Those of you who have been audited by WEC hopefully will be able to see the similarities between WEC's current process and the new Align audit process. As we compare and contrast Sunbear Power and Orco's experiences, you will be able to get a glimpse of what it will be like to use Align and the SEL. So how will these experiences compare for Sunbear and Orco? Let's start this journey on the day when Sunbear receives their NOAP through WEX Secure Workspace and when Orco is notified that they can view their audit notice package in Align. Similarly, 120 days before their audit start date, both Sunbear and Orco received an email from WEC and or Align stating that their NOAP is ready to download or that their AMP is ready to view. After this notification, this is where their paths diverge. Previous to receiving their NOAP package, Sunbear had been given access to WEC Secure Workspace. Whereas in Align, all primary compliance contacts will automatically be given access to Align. On the left, left screen, side of the screen, um, you see what might be familiar, familiar to some as the zipped NOAP folder that WEX sent to Sunbear through the secure workspace. This contained the audit, um, sorry, this contained the audit notice letter, our SAS, our FI folder, and other audit related documents and instructions. On the right is a representation of how Orco accesses their AMP through a line. By going to the audit and spot, check, spot checks view in the dropdown and selecting their ME or monitoring engagement. This is where they will be able to view their audit notice package. All the audit information and documents like what Sunbear received are now contained in Orco's, what I like to call the audit hub or what Daniel mentioned as the one-stop shop, the aligned monitoring engagement. Through the ME, Orca will be able to have insight and eyes on the progress of their audit from start to finish. Next slide, please. But now that they have downloaded their no app and have viewed their AMP, where can they find their audit information? Somewhere when they open their no app would see the following documents along with the RFI and RSAS folder. They would see the audit feedback questions, audit notice letter, audit team biographies, the certification letter, documentation instructions, and the pre-audit survey. Sunbear would first open up their audit notice letter to see when their audit dates are, the audit team, the scope, and all the important information pertaining to the specifics of their audit. How Orco receives their information in a line will be different, but familiar. When they open the ME, they are hit first with the general tab which does have a snapshot of the audit dates, the scope and the audit team. But where I would like to focus first is on the AMP tab that you see highlighted on the right. The AMP tab is a good place for Orco to start. In this tab under AMP documents, WEC will be attaching the following documents for, for Orco to download. The audit feedback questions, the audit team biographies, which I will note will be going away in the future when um, individual bios will be available in a line. The documentation instructions and the audit notice letter. We understand the convenience of having a downloadable copy of the audit information. So we are going to continue to provide these documents like we did for Sunbear. You will also notice that Orco did not receive the certification letter. To certify that all of the information Orco provided is accurate to the best of their knowledge, Align has now automated this process. And we will talk about this new process a little later in the presentation. But next, Daniel will highlight the similarities and the differences between RSAs and working papers. Next slide. Thank you, Jess. One of the major differences is the introduction of working papers. Working papers will take place of the RSAWS, documentation that many of you are familiar with. We will not be sending copies as we have in the past. Instead, now they will be readily available within your engagement page in the Align system. 
working papers will be asking for much of the same information with a similar layout, and we will be taking a closer look at those documents as we move forward. Next slide, please. Here you can see the different layouts of the RSAW pictured towards the top of the slide and the new working papers just below that. You see that both contain the compliance narrative box and the evidence table. In general, they share many similar characteristics. I want to highlight a couple of caveats when operating within the working papers though. First, formatting is lost when you paste into the Align working papers, so keep that in mind. We also ask that you do not embed any links within your compliance narrative. The table in the registered entity evidence of compliance is similar to that which was in the RSAWs and will be where you will list all associated evidence for the requirement. The working papers are a new aspect of the audit process moving forward. And with new features come questions. ORCA was very prompt in voicing any concerns or confusion, and this led to a quality submission of their compliance narrative. Now I'll hand it back to Jessica to speak about the initial request for information also known as RFIs. Next slide, please. Thanks, Daniel. Now that we have talked about RSAWs and working papers, another element of the NOAP and AMP evidence submission are the initial RFIs. As we mentioned previously, when Sunbear received their NOAP, one of the folders was the RFI folder. This had the SIP evidence request tool, or SIPERT, and instructions, as well as the protection system maintenance summary spreadsheet. Some of you may already have experience with the SIP ERT, but for those of you who haven't had this, it's just another moment of who moved my cheese. In either case, in either case, do not hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. WEC is available to help and we don't want anyone feeling frustrated and stuck in an empty cheese station. But for ORCO, their, their initial RFIs will be on the general tab. They should see three RFIs like the example on the right, which we will go over briefly right now. In a line, when a request for information is sent, an SEL reference number is created. This reference, num this reference ID will be the one ORCO will use when they need to submit their response to the SEL. This is why ORCO will now receive the pre-audit survey as one of the initial RFIs. Similar to Sunbear, the second RFI ORCO will receive is a SIP ERT and instructions. But with Align and the SEL, there is going to be a new nuance with the SEL reference IDs that we are going to talk about um, in a minute in, in reference to the SIP ERT. Lastly, the third initial RFI for ORCO is a new spreadsheet created by WEC the Operations and Planning Evidence Spreadsheet. The OMP Evidence Spreadsheet is a new spreadsheet similar to the CPRT in format, where we have condensed all of our OMP pre-audit evidence requests in one place. Like the CPRT, the OMP Evidence Spreadsheet was created to help bring organization and clarity to our initial requests, and hopefully reduce the overall amount of RFIs um, during the audit. I was able to participate in an audit recently where the entity's initial evidence was extraordinarily complete, annotated, and intuitive. But the only data requests that we were sent were for interviews. This was one of the smoothest, smoothest audits I have ever been a part of, and I know in great part it was because of the initial effort made by the entity. Um, next slide, please. Um, but before we dive into data requests and RFIs, I wanted to mention this nuance that ORCA will see in the SIP ERT and OMP evidence spreadsheets. As you can see, the, the screenshots here are of the OMP evidence spreadsheet and the SIP ERT. This should look familiar if you have worked with the SIP, SIP, R, SIP ERT before. If you haven't, here is a little glimpse into what you will see. To help with evidence organization, we have added a column called SEL reference ID for upload which you can see highlighted in red. We have included the reference IDs here for a few reasons. The first is so that ORCO can copy and paste with ease when they need to upload their evidence to the SEL. Second, we have used tags for extra organization in the SEL, so that it will be easier for the auditors to locate um, what ORCO has submitted. 
as I mentioned, when an RFI is created in a line, it also creates an SEL reference ID. But in the case of the SIPBRT and the OMP evidence spreadsheet, we want ORCO to upload all their associated evidence using the SEL reference ID numbers that we give in the spreadsheets. This is not meant to be confusing, but if at any time there are questions, please remember to communicate early and often. So now Daniel is going to dive into the data requests and RFIs. Next slide. Thank you, Jess. Um, the submittal of data requests and the transition to RFIs should be a facet of the audit engagement that seems pretty familiar. Sunbear is using our legacy system and they are being sent data requests and interview requests through WEX, WEX Secure Workspace. Orco will be receiving these types of requests as RFIs that will be housed in the aligned system. On the left, you see a traditional data request and on the right, you see the new format for aligned RFIs. Next slide, please. Something that also should be familiar to anyone who has been audited by us is the fact that WEC will send a similar email notification letting both Sunbear and Orco know that their data request or RFI has been sent. Now we can take a look at a few nuances that Orco experienced as they, as they were introduced to the Align RFIs. The first nuance Orco needed adjusting to is that the RFI ID numbers are not sequential. The RFI number does not necessarily indicate how many RFIs are currently active within the engagement. The other key difference Orco experienced is how we wanted them to respond. For regular RFIs, the SEL reference number is included at the bottom of the document, so you can easily copy and paste when uploading to the SEL. In this case, Orco found themselves in need of an extension for the due date of an RFI. Orco immediately notified WEC of the time frame of the extension needed. This gave the WEC audit team ample time to one, grant the extension, and two, to keep their audit progress on, on schedule. Now Jessica will review how Sunbear and Orco will go about submitting that evidence. Next slide. Yes, thanks, Daniel. Now that we've talked about the evidence that Orco and Sunbear are preparing to submit, how do they submit it for review? This may be one of the biggest who moved my cheese moments. Sunbear will be uploading their evidence to WEX Secure Workspace where zip folders and folder structures abound. As they upload evidence, it will look something like the screenshot we see here with the familiar audit data folder. In contrast, Orco will be uploading their evidence to the SEL using the reference IDs provided in the AMP tab, as well as the evidence spreadsheets and, or RFIs. There are no folders or zip folders when uploading to the SEL. In, in SEL world, there will be a few things Orco will need to get used to, such as a restricted time frame for uploading evidence, which is between 7 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time to 10 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time. This is subject to change, of course, but WEC will notify Orco if it does. File size, it does matter. Through some trial and error, we have found that, that files um, that are around 30 megabytes have the most success uploading. And when Orco submits evidence, um, they will need to notify WEC because we WEC will not be notified when something is uploaded to the SCL. If for some reason you do have issues with the SCL, um, submit a ticket to NERC support and notify the compliance program coordinator of the issue. This will be very important as we move forward. Um, next slide, please. I want to briefly talk about the SEL and give a little glimpse into what it will look like for ORCO when they start uploading evidence. Let's say right off the bat, ORCO is having issues using accessing the SEL. The first thing WEC will suggest is to try using a different browser, classic, or Firefox. Now that Orco is ready to upload its evidence, um, um, it will use the SCL reference IDs it has been given and navigate to the NERC SCL portal. It will look like step one. Orco will paste the reference ID in the field and click update. They should receive a valid reference ID box. And once that appears, they can start uploading their files. This is step two. The third step, is in reference to the manifest that will be generated after ORCO is done uploading to the SEL. 
There will be no other record for ORCO of what they have uploaded, so they will need to keep this manifest for their records. Again, if there are any issues throughout this process, I know ORCO will communicate early by submitting a ticket to NERC support and by reaching out to WEC. Next slide, please. The last element we would like to talk about is how Sunbear Power and Orco Electric will certify their audit submission. Sunbear received a certification letter as one of the documents in their NOAP. They would need to sign and submit this letter through WEX Secure Workspace along with the rest of their evidence submission. This is different uh, for Orco. With a line, Orco will need to check a box under the registered entity comments section of the AMP tab. For ORCO, they would not check this box until all of their evidence and working papers are complete and their evidence has been, been uploaded to the SCL. In this aspect, Align has automated how the entity will certify, and it does hold the same validity as a certifi certification letter that is physically sent to WEC. As we conclude, Daniel will be highlighting some best practices and some closing thoughts. Next slide, please. Yeah, thank you, Jess. Um, so I, I wanted to highlight some best practices that we've experienced through some of our early Align pilot engagements. Uh, first would be evidence submittal. Is evidence submitted on time? Um, if not, does the entity promptly explain why? Is evidence thorough and detailed? This can drastically affect the amount of DRs and RFIs, uh, as well as interviews that are needed throughout an engagement. Next is early DR or RFI submission. The ability for WEC to submit early DRs or RFIs allows our team to get a head start on audit activity, um, elongating the time frame that WEC and the entity have to collaborate creates a more efficient audit experience for everyone involved. Orco allowed early RFIs, and this created a much more flexible audit schedule for the WEC team. Next would be detailed and responsive. Um, our DRs and RFI responses detailed, submitted when asked, as mentioned um, before, thorough responses can negate the need for further DRs and RFIs or, or related interviews. This in turn allows for further focus on the other standards and requirements that need further attention. On-time responses allow the audit team to stay on track within the engagement. ORCO demonstrated thorough and prompt responses, resulting in fewer RFIs and interviews. And finally, within these best practices, um, our entity preparedness. An entity's familiarity and comfort using the Align system will go a long way towards a successful engagement. This stems back to the idea of WEX training and our aim to see that training continue to evolve. ORCO was very engaged throughout the training sessions and was prepared with questions. This led to a strong understanding of the Align system and more time spent on the true scope of the audit rather than navigating the Align system. Next slide, please. So yeah, so now I wanna to touch on a few closing thoughts uh, to wrap things up. I wanna review a few key areas that were covered already today. And so while there are, uh, many areas that might feel different uh, between audits that are using our legacy system and the new Align system, there should be many areas that feel familiar as well. Align-based training um, will continue to evolve and grow, and as we complete more Align-based engagements, our ability to provide the best training possible increases. We look at each audit engagement as a true partnership in ensuring the reliability of the Western Interconnection. Our success is your success as yours is ours. And our training efforts will play a key role in ensuring the entities we work with are as prepared as possible. And as was mentioned a little earlier, a quick reminder that all US-based audits will be taking place within the Align and SEL systems beginning July 1st of this year. And remember, when the cheese is moved, Let's be like the first two characters who adapted quickly and find our new gold mine of cheese. And with that, um, we, we, we wrapped up pretty quick, but we were open to taking questions. Thank you, Jessica and Daniel. We did get some questions from the audience, so we'll go ahead and start with those. 
Uh, the first one is, is there a hard copy of the working paper so entities can prepare their responses? Go ahead, Daniel. Yeah, I'm trying to think. And, and Holly, if, if you're online, maybe you can, can lend me a hand here as well, whether or not they do receive um, a hard copy to work off of. Yeah, I can help here. Um, with the aligned working papers, they're essentially supplementing what would have been provided with the RSA Word documents. And so there's not a hard copy. Some of you are aware that there is struggle with printing items out of a line, but essentially it's that green box from the RSA Word document, your story of how you're meeting the objective of the requirement, and you're entering that information into the aligned text box. There's also that evidence table uh, we showed you. So that's really where we're going to reference what is your story with that requirement that's under review. So there's not a physical copy we can provide of the working paper, but if you use that physical copy of the RSA, it'll supplement that same um, fashion of what we're looking for. Thank you. Next question. Do we need to monitor a line for requests or will they'll also be notified via email when data requests are posted in a line? Yes, I'll take that one. Um, yes, you will. We will, you should get a, an email from a line, but also by WEC. We, we wanted to make sure that communication was, um, well, the, the biggest key for us. And so we're not going to totally rely on the line to make sure that you get notifications. So you will receive an email from WEC every time that there is something that we send or upload. Um, so you can count on that. That will be something that we, we, can, we do now and we are going to continue doing. Thank you, Jessica. Okay, this next question has a couple parts. So I'll ask it in in separate pieces. First is, do the working papers have a character limit? I don't think they do. That would be my answer as well, Jess. Currently, we are not aware of a character limit, but I'll share that when it comes to a line, we reserve the right to learn something new. <laughs> Great. Do the working papers request a narrative at the requirement level only or at each sub-requirement level? So I'll take a stab at this. From what I understand, like th there's there's not sub requirement narrative boxes, so everything will be at the requirement level. Thanks. If anyone wants to expound on that, um, <laughs> please do. <laughs> No, I, you said that perfectly, Jess. The, right now, a line cannot scope down to the requirement part. So um, if we were to say, let's just do SIP 10, R1, part 1.6, and that's all WEC wants to look at. A line can't get that granular with the working paper to say part 1.6, but we would make that note in the audit notice letter that's attached to the audit notice package tab really trying not to speak alphabet soup, but um, we'll still part to the, or scope to the part when that's the, the risk assessment and scope development calls for, but it just will be difficult to uh, reflect that in a line at this time. So really reference the documents we provide to you. Thank you. Uh, next question, where can we find an example of the O&P evidence submission file? <laughs> You guys want me to take that one? <laughs> sure. Yes. <laughs> um, this has been a, a pet project for me, if you will. Uh, as we looked to the working papers and align versus the operations and planning RSA Word documents, we noticed that a lot of the ONP RSAs include an evidence requested table, or there's even questions in the RSAs. And so if that information isn't included in the aligned working papers, which currently it isn't, we were looking for how can we still provide that specific information we need for the RSA of the standard and then get that to you. So that way, as an entity, you're tracking and you're not having to go pull up the RSA Word document and say, what am I supposed to provide to WEC? So we started developing this OMP evidence spreadsheet. It's currently under review for the standards um, that we can build into it. 
OMP is just a massive family of standards. So that's somewhere around 80 plus. And right now we've built about 20 of them in there that are um, through our Align pilots. So we're working on reviewing that, getting that to a state where uh, we could post that for reference of what's currently in there, but that just might take some time. So stay tuned when we do have something that's available uh, publicly, uh, we'll post that and we can follow up in one of our monthly webinars. Just know it's in progress and we're doing our best to get that going. Yeah. We did have a number of questions around that OMP evidence spreadsheet. So stay tuned everyone, it's a work in progress. Next question, any update on the rollout of a line for Canada, including British Columbia? Uh, I'll take this one as well uh, as a member of WEX Align user group with the ERO. Um, we are currently in the process harmonization discussion with NERC for British Columbia and Alberta. We anticipate implementation possibly near the end of the year. So right now, I don't have any specifics we can share, but we are in ongoing conversations and working towards that. So especially for our international partners, just uh, stay tuned and know uh, we'll be in touch as we get those details together. Thank you. Is WEC going to continue to have the list of entities that are scheduled for audit in the next calendar year? Uh, Holly, is this something that you have some insight into as well? Uh, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> If I've heard correctly, uh, we will not be posting the annual schedule um, to WAC.org publicly with the rules of procedure changing last May and the requirement of 270 day notices of an upcoming audit engagement. Entities will be notified that far in advance, but I don't believe we'll uh, be posting a public schedule anymore. We have a number of questions related to whether the RSA documents will be able to be downloaded since Align has those working papers. Does anyone want to expand on that? So RSAs won't be, we won't be sending RSAs and I think that they still will be available to, for, they're publicly available for entities to reference um, at NER. So you will access those, but we won't be sending them and they won't be able, you know, you won't be able to download them from something that we submit. But you, I do know that you still will have access through NERC and you can do it that way and um, use that as a reference as you go through the Align audits. Great. Will entities be able to paste in Excel tables into the working papers or will we have to build it out in a line? You will have to actually use the, you'll have to use the table that is provided in a line. Unfortunately, the, the formatting does not carry over. And so that, that will be an adjustment, um, but it does, you can um, make some changes within um, align to be able to highlight and do some other formatting once once you put your information in there, but you cannot copy and paste Excel files into mm -hmm. there. Thank you. Um, we related to this have several questions asking about the lack of formatting in the working papers. Do you have anything you can clarify or tips or tricks to help them do that better? That's a great question. And I think that's something that as we have been working with some of our, our pilot entities that have gone fine, um, that's a question that I ask them um, and, and trying to be in communication with them with tricks. And, and to be honest, I have not had um, some major insights into that, but that is something that I will take. If that is a popular thing to know, then I will, I will go back to the entities that have been or are currently working in in a line and see what they say or what their tips and tricks have have been. Um, if there is any, like Holly, I'm not sure if you have had any um, more insight into that from people, but um, that have been using it. But that is something that I can definitely, like, like we 
we are looking to to find those tips and tricks and we will will share them in training if once we know them no thank you jessica um, i can just share that there has been some conversation on this within the regions and uh we're we're doing our best to share that feedback with NERC. so my hope is that maybe in the future that could be resolved but uh, just no guarantees at this point Okay, coming back to the OMP evidence spreadsheet, the question is, will entities be required to complete the entire OMP evidence spreadsheet, regardless of whether all elements align with the audit scope? Uh, currently, uh, when you receive the OMP evidence spreadsheet, it should be tailored to the scope of the audit. So we wouldn't be including the evidence requested items from requirements that we've built into our template if they're not in your scope. And then um, as far as like detailed tabs, like what's in the SIP evidence request tool, right now that's just not as built out. This is in uh, very early stages and really just WEC trying to supplement how we still ask for the information the RSAWs would have. So in short, no, because it's going to be very specific to your audit scope. Thank you. Um, evidence request tool level two responses may be detailed and involve many files. If we're not allowed to use zip files with the SEL, how should they be packaged? I'll take a first stab, Holly, and I know you will have some, some, some good insight into this. Um, so one of the things that we did mention is that we will be including those SEL reference ID for upload into the SIP um, ERT. So the reason why we put that there is because we have added tags for organization. Um, and so fortunately, unfortunately, that is, that is going to be the way that um, it, it's going to feel a little awkward without folder structure. I will say that. Um, but when you upload those files using those SEL reference IDs, because we have tagged them with specific organization, that is what's going to help us when we go into the SEL to search out those documents. Um, and so the folders won't be needed in that sense because we we have tagged them so that it that we do know where they are and we're not just going into a huge file like picking documents. So. Um, is as new as this is. That's why I was like, this this whole new world of no zip folders or folder structure. It's the, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun for all of us to get used to that that nuance. Um, and we are learning. We're continuing to learn um, what works for entities as as they're going through and preparing their evidence. And when it comes time for you to upload to the SCL. Um, questions do come up. Um, and so far, we, I, I mean, we have been able to successfully find documents. And so I'm, so far, we're thinking this is a, a good way to do it. Um, but again, we will, we will learn as we go. Um, so if, if there are new things that we need to learn from the file organization, um, we will, we will learn it and then we will Im implement it into the next audit. Okay. Sticking with the SEL for a moment, uh, is there a character limit on the file name when uploading to the SEL? You know, <laughs> this is another one of those things. Like I have heard like, I, you get used to one thing and that's in your head. And then there's another, you know, Holly, if you have a specific, I think it's similar to the file limits or we've been telling our entity, the entities to stick with the file limits that we have had yes. with the secure workspace. With the character limits, it's not the 50 characters that's with secure workspace. And that's because of the uh, structure of our internal folders. When that gets uploaded, it can cause problems, um, corrupt files, that kind of thing. So the SEL has, I think, a 200 character limit. I had to phone a friend. So thank you, Angela Shapiro. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'd say that in a way, 
you're probably not going to reach near that 200 character limit. So it shouldn't be problematic if you want to really be informative with your file names. So using that CPRT level two as an example, you could do CIP3, uh, what is it, R2, L2, O4, and then the file name that you're going for. So um, you can use that to your advantage. We do like informative file names. It's very helpful, but also realizing we've implemented that tagging uh, to try to help us organize it on our end about the zipped folders. Great. Can you also share the size preference for the SEL? So the size limit when you're uploading a file into the SEL. So we have um, had success when an entity keeps their file size to 30 megabytes or around 30 megabytes. Um, they haven't had any problems when it has been around that limit. Um, the only times uh, an entity has reached out to us as, is when the file size is pretty large or, or over that. So that's why this is, has been a little bit of trial and error, learning the, the limitations of the, these file sizes. But as of right now, in the, in the entities that have been able to, to work with this, that is what we have found that 30 megabytes or around 30 megabytes is the file size that you will not have any problems uploading to the SEL if you stick to that or around that. And I just add there, we know that that number is low and it can be hard to keep your files to that size. So NERC is aware of this snafu and uh, they're working on it. Thank you. The next question is, is a line hosted by a public service provider or does it reside on WEX internal hosting hardware? How does this impact the security and accessibility of uploaded files? Uh, I can at least take a stab at the first question here. Um, a line is hosted by AWS. SCL is hosted by NERC's data center or in NERC's data center. Neither is connected to WEX systems in any way. And there's no connection between a line the AWS and the SEL. Thank you, Holly. How is the line accommodating internal controls? Is the expectation that internal controls will be submitted as part of requirement narratives, or will it be requested as a separate part or a separate RFI? So part of our audit entire audit process we've we've started doing a six month call to with entities to talk about their preliminary scope and during that call we've WEC has started uh, sending an internal controls document at that time um, so after the call we will send this document and that that's where WEC is capturing in con internal controls and this is in part to by doing it early um, before the notice of audit or the audit notice package is sent, um, we are hoping that this will inform the auditors as they go into as we go into the audit and and help as as they audit the standards. So um, it is a little bit of pre audit work now for WEC. Um, so and that that will be due by. Well, I guess I shouldn't say when it'll be due. Things keep evolving in that area as well. But the internal controls, um, WEC is now doing as more pre-audit work. Related to that, we've had a couple of questions come in about how the ICDCT will be handled. Yes, and that's the document I was referring to, the ICDCT. Right. So the ICDCT, we will send that at the time of the six month call. And like I said, this information will help inform our auditors um, and possibly our scope as we go into the audit and could, could mean less questions, less RFIs, um, just depends on what length the entity wants to go to in giving the information in the ICDCT. Great. Uh, we have a question going back to the ability to print in a line and that entities are having problems doing that. Is there a workaround or is this just something that's in development with NERC? That was oh. to print? Go ahead, Holly. I, I... 
<laughs> I'm trying to think if I know of a workaround. Um, right now, I, I don't have one off the top of my head. Um, it's just, uh, it's something I know NERC is aware of. Um, I just, I, I wish I could give uh, a better update and optimistic answer there. Uh, screenshots are always possible with a line. If you are looking to take like a screenshot of a request for information or self-cert, something like that. Um, but just that print functionality is not there yet. Okay. Um, we have a clarifying question around the ICDCT. And how will that be submitted to WEC? Is that also through the SEL or through a line or is it through another process? Well, thanks for asking that question, actually. Yes, we will be um, using the WEC Secure Workspace for the ICDCT um, because it is in advance of the audit. Um, we will have access to the monitoring engagement to use a line to, to submit things or to do RFIs in that way. So we will be using WEX Secure Workspace um, for the transfer of the ICDCT. Okay. Um, are the working papers for SIP and for ONP standards? I'm seeing some head nods. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <Great>. Yes. <laughs> Um, also, to clarify, if you are scheduled to receive your audit notice before July 1st, you will audit through the historic process and not through a line? No, so this will be if your audit dates are in July or anything past July 1st, you will be audited in a line. So your notice of audit pack or your audit notice package will obviously come before July 1st. But um, if you are, if your audit start dates are in July, you will be audited in the line. Yeah, thank you, Jess. That's what I was just going to, the audit start date. So your notice of audit package could be in March or April. Um, but if your audit start date is July or August or thereafter and you're a U.S. entity, uh, that will be conducted through a line. Okay. We actually have a question of related to self search in a line. So hopefully this is one you can answer. Uh, the self search in a line is at the sub requirement level, which can be burdensome. Is this something that can be improved? Uh, I can quickly jump in on that one. I, I, I know that it's a uh, feedback we've gotten and I believe multiple regions have provided that feedback to NERC. They're working on it. So uh, we're, we're hoping to see some improvements maybe by this December when we issue next year's annual self-certs. Good. Uh, do aligned work papers also require entities to answer supplemental questions listed within some of the requirements of the RSAW? Jesse, can I answer this one? I'm like jumping over. Yes, I was like, please. My my answer would be very short, so I feel like you would have a more <laughs> expanded version. Um, the Align working papers, especially for the operations and planning reliability standards, they don't include those questions that are in the RSA Word documents. So that's why we've been supplementing that OMP evidence spreadsheet to capture the questions that are part of an RSA and make sure that those get asked to the entity for the requirements where they're applicable. So it's not in the Align web form, but you will still receive that question as part of the audit notice package. Okay. Will RSAs be going away? The notes for auditor and et cetera are very useful for entities, even if we no longer use it to build out the audit responses. No, that's a great question. Um, no, the RSAs are not going away. Work is continuing to develop those, especially as we see new standards coming effective. Uh, it's a great resource for, I remember being on the entity side and uh, reading those compliance assessment approach sections going, if I can answer these questions, I can help the auditor answer these questions. So they're still referenced in that way. Just right now, that depth of the RSA Word document is not yet built into the aligned working papers. Hopeful that maybe it could get there, but just there's a lot of work to be done in that area. So I don't know when or if that would be um, the outcome. Okay. 
Are all aligned contacts for the entity able to answer and submit in a line, or is only one person at an entity able to submit information? I'll take a stab at this, but I there are different uh, permissions that people have within a line. But um, so each entity, when you grant access to people in your organization in a line, you will have, that is your opportunity to assign their permissions. And so there's, and, and I'm sorry, cause I can't remember all of them off of my head, but there's like a read only type permission. There's one that will be able to go in and like basically check the boxes and, and things like that. So depending on when you set up new, like, like I said, all primary compliance contacts will be given the access automatically to align. But if there's other people you set up in align, you will be, you will have the opportunity to give them whatever permissions that you want. And then, then yes, depending on their permissions, they will be able to access um, things, the uh, like engagements, audit engagements or, or things like that and and submit or check boxes and things like that. Thank you. Uh, going back to the OMP evidence spreadsheet, we have a question about the expected timeline for that, um, for its development. Do we have something we can share? Uh, ask again, Amelia, I was trying to pull up a link to share in the chat and move back. All right, D the expected timeline for the OMP evidence spreadsheet that's in development. Uh, right now, I don't have one. So uh, we're, we're working to just prep for the pilot audits we've got through the end of the year. And those, I notice a lot, it's going out for after July 1st. Uh, so just unfortunately, just stay tuned. Right now, I can't commit to a date. Okay. Uh, following up on the question that was asked about who can submit, uh, we had a follow-up. Are, are there limits to the number of people that can be assigned permissions in a line to see, download, and submit? Uh, no. <laughs> I was like waiting for, I got a little help from Angie on that one. I saw the bubbles. I was like, uh. No, there is not. There's no limits. <laughs> That's fantastic. So all staff that need it should be able to get that access. Will entities still be informed of their audit scope at the six month kickoff meeting? Yes, we will still be at six months. We will go over the preliminary audit scope um, and, and ask, answer any questions that might come up from that. Okay. Is there a way for an entity to view the files that have been uploaded to the SEL? No, the only thing that you will, unfortunately, fortunately, the, the, the manifest that you receive after you upload to the SEL will be the only thing that you will have telling you what is in the SEL. So um, I know that's, a, that's an interesting nuance, but um, it is something that, I think, yes, we will all have to get used to, but um, that manifest, I think, is going to be very important as you upload to the SEL and are able to have a record of what you put in there. Thank you. Who will the automated Align notifications be sent to? Is that all Align users or just the primary compliance contact? the primary compliance contacts and any alternate compliance contacts. Okay. So we have a question about the RFI numbers and that they're not sequential. Um, is that something you have anything you can speak to about um, why they're not sequential or if that's a possible enhancement? I'm not sure if it will be a, an enhancement, but this is because this is an ERO wide system. And so anytime an, I, I can be in an audit engagement creating an RFI and someone else can as well. And so unfortunately, because it is ERO wide, it is something that that's why it's not sequ sequential. 
So it is, it is, this nuance is something that we also, it's going to be fun getting used to as well, because that is, we keep track of things right in a very sequential order in when we were working through the workspace. Um, and so it is right now just a system limitation um, of a nuance of having an ERO wide system where we, everyone has access like that. Thank you. Uh, we have a question about, are there any plans for a file upload template in order to import that RSAW data into a line? That's a great question. And that's something that has come up um, with the entities that have been piloting a line for us. And I think it's something that I think we're willing to consider as far as like, is it worth our time, your time to have a templated document that will you can use. Um, I think as we do more audits in a line, this will be something that will become more clear. But the fact that this question keeps coming up, it does, it is starting to seem like this would be something that's useful. But I will say this is a question that I ask every entity is like their feedback on or how they did this process of you know, did they create their own document? Some entities have created their own in-house document to help during themselves during um, evidence prep preparation. Um, and so these are the questions I'm asking and we're, we are getting this feedback. And so I just will say that it is, it, it is something that um, I think we're considering and we're having the conversation and getting that feedback from entities, but there's been no official, yes, there will be or not. Um, we're still kind of getting that that feedback. Okay. Is folder structure something that is slated for future enhancement? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, I would only, I mean, I, I know in my heart, I wish, but I don't, I don't know if that will be a, a future enhancement. Okay. We have a, a request to repeat the answer about reducing the self-cert to requirement level in a line. Can we can we revisit that topic briefly? Yeah, and I responded to it in uh, Uva as well. Um, right now, NERC is aware of it and they're working on it. I'm hopeful, cautiously optimistic that maybe by December when we issue next year's annual self-certifications that we could see that improvement, but you can also add that caveat in there of no guarantees. Thank you, Holly. Um, at what point is the ICDCT required to be submitted? When will the entity notified if their audit scope is revised based on the ICDCT submittal? And can you clarify the overall timelines associated with the ICDCT? These are all amazing questions, <laughs> honestly. And these are questions that we currently are asking ourselves. <laughs> I feel like we've been having conversations of um, well, I, I will say I haven't heard conversations of making it required um, yet, um, but so far right now, the timeline, um, well, I'm glad to hear a request for having more rigid timelines on this, because that may be something that um, would be a conversation that we can have. But as of right now, once we, once we send it after the six month call, we are giving, um, Oh gosh, I don't know the exact amount of days, to be honest. Two months. It's uh, shared at the six month call and then we request it back by the date of notice of audit package. But right, just to I think what you're alluding to, we are looking at that process and how that can be uh, more consistent and informative. So I would just say stay tuned on that one uh, as well as we, we continue to make that more efficient. Thank you. Holly, I believe you had some comments you wanted to make before we wrap up today. Yes, I just want to say thank you everyone for the questions. Jessica and Daniel, you were wonderful and shared your wise wisdom and sage experience. We also had two uh, webinars that we've done with our first two pilot entities. Um, so in October, in the Compliance Open webinar, now named the RSO Monthly Update, 
uh, Sacramento Municipal Utility District uh, joined us to debrief on their experience using the line for audit. Um, they were our first entity, so that link is in the chat section. Feel free to watch that and hear their feedback as well. And then just last February, uh, last month, we had California ISO join us and debrief on their pilot audit experience as our second entity, and uh, they shared a lot of great information as well. So those are two additional resources for those who are gearing up for an engagement to say, what else can I learn? You might get some great pieces of information from hearing the entity side. And I also uh, feel comfortable saying that both of those entities would welcome uh, being contacted and sharing uh, their experience and helping anyone else prepare. So just click those links and watch those webinars and see if they're helpful. Thank you for sharing that, Holly. And thank you, Jessica and Daniel, for your time and expertise today. We're grateful for your time. We will take a 15 minute break and start again at 11 for oversight planning and risk assessments. Thank you everyone. <laughs>